Are you curious about the Cooling Master H500M? Perhaps you are, and maybe there's a couple of reviews out there already, which there definitely are, but I'm gonna take you along the build experience of actually building inside of this case and get the full-on experience of what it's like to actually have a full-fledged PC inside of it and take you along the ride, so let's get into that. Hey, what's up guys? My name is JD from JD Tech here and welcome back to the channel where we discuss PC passion reviews, guides, mods, and more. So if you're into that sort of thing, consider subscribing and checking out the rest of the channel to feast your tech junkie needs. All right, so we have all our parts together. Today we're gonna to be building in this Cooler Master H500 mesh or H500M, an absolutely beautiful case with maximum airflow coming in from the front and also pretty decent airflow from the top. So this is the PC case we're gonna be building in today and pretty much showcasing with all our parts over here, which is transported from my previous personal rig, which has a Ryzen 1700, 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM from Asgard, a 650 watt power supply from EBGA, a GTX 1070 from MSI, and also a Samsung 240 gigabyte SSD, I believe, and some custom cables and also the Master Liquid 120 AIO. So let's get into the build experience with this case and see what it's like building inside of it. So first I'm gonna pretty much disassemble the case to have it in its most bare bones form so that we can really start working with it and get these pretty panels off and not have to worry about ruining them. But I guess I'm gonna start with this, the side panel, which has a flat head screw instead of a thumb screw. But basically you twist it to the side and there's a little latch that uh, comes down like this so that you can unhinge it. Otherwise you lock it by flipping the latch up and that's how you would lock it. So that's the only thing I really don't like. I, I love a toolless design. That doesn't really scream toolless to me, but it's okay. At least we have this nice hinge for this to catch on and it comes out really nice and easy. Okay, so the top panel and the front panel both pop off by pushing in uh, tabs right here. So um, we need to get access to the rear panel first in order to do something like that. And the rear panel has the same uh, dismantle design with the singular flathead screw. Boom. So here's another really cool thing. This case comes with all sorts of cable management panels, I guess. It covers the cables and makes it look really neat and nice, which is pretty cool. Um, if you're spending $200 on a case, I think you're going for aesthetic and function. So. This case is blending those things pretty nicely off the bat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna remove this cable management cover. And kind of just unhinge it like that. We'll do the same with the rest of these panels. I kind of wish these screws uh, were capped so that this way, if they were capped, they wouldn't come all the way out and then we stick with this. Otherwise you have to fetch these screws. All right, so this is attached to, it looks like a fan hub over here or RGB hub. Um, so I'm just gonna slide that in under here. You can unscrew this to detach it from this panel, but I don't wanna do that right now. Okay, so it kinda, it sits around the rim right here behind the motherboard tray and you just kinda pop it on pop it off so pretty easy and that just covers the back of the motherboard and gives you relatively easy access in case you want to swap out your CPU cooler now let's try to get this uh, top panel off so for top panel removal there is one thumb screw in the back here that you have to remove that's just a safety thumb screw I guess and once that's popped off this should come off pretty easily I popped out the tabs already is it like hinged on? No, it's, yeah, there's a little bit of a hinge there. And then you kind of just lift it up and off of the frame. And so this thing is pretty much broken down here and we can get to actually building in this, which will be pretty nice. So here's the accessories box right here. They give you some uh, zip ties, of course. This is a digital RGB cable. And we also have a Molex connection. Uh, we got our screws. They are all just jumbled up in one bag, which is fine, but I've seen uh, Fantex kind of have its own separation box like this. 
and I would love to see that sort of implementation. Uh, and they also give you a glass cleaner or just like a little microfiber cleaner for cleaning off the tempered glass. So I'm gonna unpack these screws and figure out which ones are which. They have like little diagrams inside the manual. They have little diagrams that label out all these screws. So I already know what some of these are used for. Like these tiny little ones are used for screwing into the SSDs and stuff like that, which I'll go over in a little bit. Uh, this is for fan installation or uh, radiator installation, which is really nice to have. I'm glad they included these in case you wanna mount in front of the case on the front panel. And it looks like we don't have all the standoffs in, installed on this case. We only have two standoffs installed, which is fine. For some people, that'll matter to them a lot. For me, it doesn't really matter because uh, it's not that hard. It's just one extra step. And then they give you a little uh, standoff install right here, and you just install the standoffs with this in case you guys have never used that before. And all these are labeled out for EATX, micro ATX, and regular ATX form factor. So ATX will have A. They have like a little diagram in here. I don't know if the camera will pick it up because uh, it's black on black. But basically they have a, uh, they have a legend over here and it has uh, EATX equals E, ATX equals A, micro ATX equals M, and mini ITX equals I. And each little hole on here is labeled with the corresponding letter. That is really nice, really nifty, makes the installation process much easier than trying to line up your motherboard every single time. So I do appreciate that attention to detail. Basically, I'm just installing wherever it says A on here. Now what I'll do is take the, I don't know what to call this, the driver, and you pretty much just go over the uh, standoff and you just tighten it down till the thread is finished pretty much till it's bottomed out as you guys can probably tell we've got three fans included with the case we got a 140 millimeter standard cooler master fan over here and then we have the mf 200 r argb fan so these are digital rgb fans so these are the higher end ones uh, they don't use the standard 12 volt connection they use the 5 volt connection which allows for addressable rgbs and they're also 200 millimeter fans. So they're big boys. They're actually really nice fans. I really like the 200 millimeter fans that uh, Cooler Master makes. I am going to install this with the entire AIO attached to this just because uh, I already had this installed on here. So the two pre-installed standoffs in this case have like a little lip on them so that your motherboard seats properly and is lined up with all the holes once they're seated in those two standoffs because they have that little lip on them. Otherwise, they would, the motherboard would be sliding around on top of the standoff. So that's a nice inclusion as well. Also allows you to mount the motherboard vertically, as in having the case vertical instead of having it laying down in horizontal. Now we gotta find a home for this AIO and I'm probably just gonna mount it up over here perhaps because there is not a lot of room to be mounting it. So yeah, this would be next to impossible with having the radiator and then two fans on each side. So what I'm gonna probably do is just mount this up over here and call it a day. And I think that'll look just fine for the sake of this video and for the sake of demonstration. And we've got plenty of clearance for other things up here. So I think that'll be just fine. The tubes aren't under too much tension right here. This will be fine. If I had it over here, that would be fine as well. But I already have this 200 millimeter fan over here. But the way the fans are facing, it would be pulling in air from the top instead of expelling it. But we already have plenty of induction over here. So I got to flip the fans around and mount it up top. All right, I swapped around the fans and then we're going to mount this on this side of the case and not this side of the case because, or this side of the frame, because the way the front panel or the top panel works is that the ventilation comes in from the sides. So there would be less of a amount of volume being able to be expelled from this hitting the top of the case and then push out the sides rather than being out over here, be able to expel more air and not be limited by the top of the panel um, as much versus being over here. I would opt for a little bit of a taller case to be able to have better mounting clearance on top of the frame here and between the motherboard because it is pretty narrow. And then we're gonna get this one locked in. We have our AIO installed and we can move on with the rest of the case. All right, so the next step we're gonna get into is installing the power supply and the SSD. 
and uh, I don't have an HDD on me, but I'm gonna show you guys how to install that as well. The way this works, there's a little HDD slot over here. You'll notice there's no tabs or anything to pull out from this side, which you can't. So uh, what you have to do is actually take off the PSU shroud and get access to it. So that's what we're gonna do. I think all you have to do is just unscrew this. So we're gonna create some access for ourselves here by taking off the power supply shroud and I am glad that this case is able to do such a thing. So what you have to do is you have to unscrew this screw right over here and then it will unlock the shroud for you and you'll be able to pull it out, but got it. And now you have access to your hard drives. All right, so now this is out. There's also a little cutout over here in case you decide to mount a radiator over here in the front panel area and you need clearance for the radiator. This kind of just uh, pops out like that. It just like slots in these hinges and it's really simple, but I'm not installing a radiator on the front, so I won't need that. I really do like that aspect because sometimes you'll see like cables running down there and we don't really need full access to this because we're not really working with this but this will help with some cable routing so i'm just going to leave it off for right now and i'm also going to take this panel off right here for the psu and like with the other part of the psu shroud there's one screw back here i have two screws over here in the rear panel as well remove the hard drive cage so that i could be able to remove the psu shroud which moves just nicely without it. Uh, you do have to remove the uh, hard drive cage in order to remove this nicely, I should say. It can be a little problematic if you already have hard drives installed. So now that we have full access to the bottom here, we can see on the PSU shroud, these little grommets hold in the SSDs. So if you take off this bracket, you can just mount uh, the PSU by sliding it through into here, which is nice and easy. But for me, I like taking off the PSU shroud, like I said, and having full access to all the cables. I'm also glad that all the screws holding in all the panels are the same. They all use the same power supply standard screw, so that this way you're not trying to find five different types of screws when putting back the panels and whatnot, and the hard drive cage and the PSU shroud, because that is really annoying trying to remember which is which and what goes where. All right, so for the SSD installation, flip it on its back, and then you have these little pegs that come with the case screws like this, and they're just little thumb screws, and you just kind of screw that on right there. It's super easy. You don't need a tiny screwdriver or anything. So once you're done screwing in the little pegs, you can pretty much find anywhere on the case that you want to mount. These little grommets right here in the back, you can mount the SSD to that. But like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna mount it to the power supply shroud. I'm not gonna do it right now, but I'm just showing for the sake of demonstration. Right over here, that's where we have our connections. You just literally pop it in and boom, you have your SSD installed. Looks super clean, super nice, doesn't fall out. And uh, it's pretty sturdy and you just pull it and it comes right out. Pretty smooth and easy installation process. Like I mentioned earlier, I absolutely love it. All right, so now the next thing I'm gonna work on is doing all the cable management and plugging in everything. It's not that exciting, so I'm not going to cover any of it. Instead, I'm going to explain the cable management and any potential flaws that it has and move on from there. You can see some of the cables pushed against this, uh, this plate right here, which I believe is actually for either water cooling or also the GPU mount right over here, which I also really like. And you can see some of the cables through these slots. Whoops, sorry, my, my phone just rang. It's okay, but you know, I wish, like I said, there was more space back there, so it would give you more space to, uh, to work with. Also, there wasn't a lot of tie down points to put zip ties on and everything back there, so that was another issue that I had. So, I mean, it wasn't the end of the world because these panels pretty much cover everything up but I would have liked to see more cable routing. I would like a little bit more depth, um, but that's the same with almost every case. I always wish there was more depth, but it does get tricky when you're coming around this area because you have the GPU cables coming out over here and also the motherboard cable coming out over here. So you have a lot of action going in between these two right here that really could benefit from a little bit more depth. But overall, I was able to do it. I was able to complete it. It was a little bit challenging, 
but overall was able to be done and still looks clean as the finished product. But overall, a very nice case to work with and I would highly recommend it. Everything is top-notch quality. All the parts are professionally machined and made out of metal. Um, there's very little plastic in here, believe it or not, except for, nope, even the panels are uh, metal. The only panel that isn't is the little backplate behind the motherboard. That's the only one that isn't metal. The front IO also has a USB 3.1 type C port. And I always dig that. That's always really nice to have, especially for me when I need file transfers for my camera. So let's get into some B-roll and get this beauty turned on. That doesn't sound right. Let's just turn on the computer. See how it looks. Alright, so that's what it's like building the H500M from Cooler Master. If it's not the perfect case for you, there is more relevant case reviews over here that you can check out if you're not 100% sold on it. If you are 100% sold on it, there's a link down in the description below. If you want to help support the channel that I put so much time, work, and dedication into, there's a Patreon link down below. And also, you can go to my store and purchase some merchandise like this to identify yourself as a tech junkie or also get some PC art like this to uh, spice up your setup, as uh, Ed from TechSource would say. So thank you all for watching. I will catch you guys in the next one.